Good morning, respected chief guests, staff members, and my dear friends. I wish you a very happy Republic Day. Some fortresses are so sturdily built that the only danger they are exposed to is from the inside. India's parliament is one such. The imposing, some might even say intimidating, Victorian sandstone structure is unwrinkled by the ravages of time and hides its 90-year-old foundation admirably. Quite befitting India's parliament, the temple of our democracy, as our honourable ministers do not forget to mention. The ruling party and the opposition have become partners in the crime of destroying the parliament. The first nine days of the winter session of parliament were completely lost due to repeated disruptions of the house and adjournments. Most of, bl of the blame can be put at the door of the opposition party, which seem to have taken a decision not to allow the smooth functioning of the parliament. Though some ruling party members too have been involved in creating disruptions in the house. The disruptions in the winter session are in line with the disruptions in the previous session of sitting, the 15th Lok Sabha. And there seems to be a secular decline in the time the parliament has been given to do the, to do the work it should be doing. A member of parliament recently pointed out that the lower house was in session for 128 days each year during the 1950s, for 100 days at the end of the 1980s and for only 70 days in the 1990s. Even when in session, time is lost due to disruptions, 9%, 5% and 10% in the 10th, 11th and 12th Lok Sabha respectively. The 14th Lok Sabha saw as much as 38% of the time lost because of disruptions. This may be even higher in the 15th Lok Sabha. The opposition is usually blamed for disruptions in the parliament, but recent Congress party-led governments have shown a poor record of parliamentary management. According to statistics compiled by the PRS Legislative Research, there were a total of 2,910 hours of sitting planned in the 8th Lok Sabha when the Rajiv Gandhi government was in the office. The lower house actually sat for business for 3,223 hours or 111% of the allocated time during those years. In the next Congress-dominated Lok Sabha, the 10th, which sat from 1991 to 1996, total of 2,538 hours of business were planned by the government and the house sat for almost the entire time allocated. Those who remember the politics of the Lok Sabhas will identify the weakness of Narsimha Rao's government support compared to the bulldozer majority of, Ra of Rajiv Gandhi as one of the reasons why the government reduced the number of parliamentary sittings, the 10th Lok Sabha. But this logic does not hold for the 14th Lok Sabha, which saw the return of Congress to power in the United Progressive Alliance government. Though the Congress did not have a majority of its own, it faced a rooted Bharatiya Janata Party and enjoyed stable support from its allies both within and outside the government at least for the first four years. Yet, compared to 20 years ago, the Congress-led UPA government of 2004 to 2009 called Parliament to session for only 1,992 hours during its tenure. This is a sharp fall of 918 hours of planned sitting in the 14th Lok Sabha compared to the 8th Lok Sabha. Since the Parliament sits for only 6 hours a day, this was a decline of 153 days of Parliament in session. Thus, the central government only called Parliament to session for two-thirds of the time it did two decades before. This is a very sharp fall, which cannot be justified under any circumstances, much less so under the benign political conditions faced by the UPA. Unfortunately, the 14th Lok Sabha functioned for only 1,736 out of the planned 1,992 hours, or 87% of its time. This shows the dangerous levels of decline in the functioning of the Lok Sabha, and much of the blame for this rests on the ruling dispensation. It is clear from this trend that the government does not like to face the elected representatives of the people but would rather rush through its legislative and other business in parliament the least possible time. Compared to the fact that the British parliament sits for about 200 days in a year, why was the Indian parliament called for session only for only about 66 days in a year between 2004 and 2009? It should be pointed out that while the Congress has reduced the number of sittings of Parliament, the BJP-led National Democratic Alliance government also reduced the total, no total time of Parliament during its full five-year term in the 13th Lok Sabha. The 9th Lok Sabha, with VP Singh and Chandrasekhar as Prime Ministers, and the 11th Lok Sabha, with the, with the United Front government too, saw drastically reduced parliamentary sittings. Thus, this seems to be a cross-party affliction. As the time available for parliamentary proceedings reduces, so does the ability of its members to raise concerns and issues in particular of those from the opposition parties who may not have any access to the ministers and bureaucrats in charge. As the number of days in parliament was in session, halved from 107 in 1984 to just 57 in 2004. It squeezed out time for deliberations and debates and put a premium on spectacular action which would catch the attention of the people, especially after the introduction of television cameras in the parliament. 
to this secular trend of reduced parliamentary time is the added factor of the political dead end that the main parties find themselves in. The main opposition party, the BJP, is still searching for an agenda for its pol policies, even while it is fighting organizational disarray. The left contingent still seems to not have recovered from the twin electoral shocks of 2009 and 2011, while the various regional parties have lost their sense of purpose, which the Third Front gave them on the national stage. Together, these parties do not seem to have a single constructive idea and use the most disruptive of parliamentary tactics to corner the ruling alliance. As for the ruling Congress, between its Prime Minister, who has not won a Lok Sabha election, and his de facto leader, who is still learning the ropes, Parliament appears to be in, a, in an unnecessary distraction. It is clear that the disruptionist behaviour of the opposition party and the neglect by the ruling dispensation now present a real threat to Parliament as a central institution of Indian democracy. This can have fatal consequences for the Republic and immediate measures must be taken to reverse these trends. For starters, we should ask the government to hold parliamentary sessions for at least four months each year and non-functional days should be compensated for by extra working days. Talking of undermining parliament, one can't be certain that it needs Anna's help. From all the evidence on hand, parliament is bleeding internally. Anna just might be giving it a transfusion. Thank you and Jai Hind.